That'd Let's be good roll. Get. Are we ready to do this? <clears throat> Let's do it. All right. So uh, let's get one question out of the way because we're getting asked this question by a lot of people and then we'll roll right into the, the how the rules are going to work and we're going to get this puppy going. We're going to make uh, a determination today, which team is better, Team USA or Team United Kingdom? How you doing, folks? My name is Daryl Prale and I am with neither team. I am in the middle. I am Canadian. Therefore, that makes me deeply qualified to determine the winner. Uh, first question we have up here right now is we're getting many questions. We saw it online. We saw it here. They want to know why there's no women panelists today. So I will start off and then anybody else can jump in. It wasn't malicious and it wasn't intentional. In fact, this just kind of happened organically with a bunch of people talking. Before you know it, we're like, whoa, we're getting a lot of panelists here. We got to stop. Uh, so there's the scoop. It was not meant to exclude or discount any women, and in fact, you think you'll see over and over again, many of us, myself included, do a lot of advocacy for just that cause. Go to the Vanilla Soft page, you'll see a whole series we just did in the month of March, Eight Women in Sales Profile. So there's that. Anybody else want to jump in on this, or shall we start? Yeah, I guess um, um, I just want to say that the whole idea of, of uh, the, the UK guys getting together and talk started a couple of weeks ago. And last week, the UK guys, we had four women, uh, four sales leaders from the UK, so we had a really nice debate about how women and, and men sell, whether they sell different or they sell the same. So I think Team UK have done their part in representing the women. Yes, you had the uh, so guys group versus After the group. US team now to explain, when I reached out to Scott Lees and uh, MJ, and I said, hey, man, listen, just put your best team together. Why didn't they include any women? Oh, Let's go, Costas. Let's go. Come on. Hey, it's yeah. a fair question, no? It is. Scott, MJ. Very fair. Morgan, Scott, you Scott. want to go first or me? You got it, Scott. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, I think Daryl said it best. It, it, it really just, like, it went from idea to action literally in a span of, like, 30 minutes. Um, and it was just not malicious, not intentional at all. Um, I think that there should be an all-women event. Maybe, maybe the next time is UK versus... USA and it's all women and kick all of us out of here, right? And then maybe we, if this is fun and valuable for people, maybe, you know, round three is a mix of the two. You have I like it, a bracket. Kind of, yeah. Right? All right. Ooh. We'll uh, take what, that as what, an action. What, 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 uh, I love the idea of doing brackets. Let's do that next. In the meantime, it's 10 minutes past the hour. So we're running 10 minutes late already. So I have to go real fast. I'm going to talk fast. I apologize. Let's get this party started, kids. So let's walk through the rules. If you don't know the players, on Team USA, we have Richard Harris. Last one here. Can't open an invite. Just saying. Scott Lease, Rob Jepson, Kevin Dorsey, Morgan Ingram, and Dale Dupree. Dale, I, I forgot him in every single one of my posts, but my only, you know, apology is that I was consistent, dude. So there we go. Unforgettable Dale Dupree, who apparently has the best background. That's what we're seeing. On the UK side, we have Costas Perkis. Costas was the guy who started this talking to Scott. So those two are to be complimented for making this happen. Joining him is Alex Oi, Daniel Disney, Richard Smith, and Sam Dunning. Those are your contenders Let's see who at the end of this session is the pretender. All right. My name is Daryl Pro. once again. The <clears> format <throat> is this was 60 minutes. We're still trying to do this. We may go a few minutes past the top of the hour because we started a little bit late. We apologize about that, but let me explain how it's going to work. It's very straightforward. <clears throat> There's two teams. And what we have is we have seven categories. In each category, I'm going to ask Team UK a question. They will respond. They have 90 seconds. I will be timing it. And then I'll ask Team USA to rebut. They'll have 30 seconds. That's the first question. And then we flip the tables. Now it's the second question in that category. Team US, you have 90 seconds to respond. Team UK, you have 30 seconds to rebut. You now have two questions, two answers. You've had a chance, the audience, to determine which team appears to know their stuff better from that category. We then launch a poll. With that poll, you go vote. You determine the winner, not me. We then declare the winner and that team gets a point. 
So theoretically, it could be seven nothing at the end of that round. It could be three to four. It could be five to two. You get the idea. But we're not done. Then we go from teams. We go to one on one. I pick a person from each team. My call. We call this the lightning round. I have ten questions. They're not subjective questions. They're not something you can answer willy nilly for thirty seconds. It's pretty much a yes or a no or a guess <laughs> question. Whoever guesses it right gives me the right answer or the closest answer to the right answer gets the point. So grand total possibility, 17 points, ensuring there's no tie that should take place. That, there's no surveys from no polling from the audience in that lightning round. And that, my friends, is it. We shall declare a winner after that. Gentlemen, do we have any questions at all? Yeah, let's go. Let's roll. Oh, let's roll. All right. So let let's me get it. my stopwatch here. 90 seconds for the first one. We're going to start off. The <laughs> first one is selling in a pandemic. All right. That's what we're in now. COVID-19, novel coronavirus, selling in a pandemic. I'm going to start by asking Team UK first. When I finish asking the question, I will start the timer. You guys can talk, you can figure it out, you can talk about who's going to answer this. I don't care. You got 90 seconds to figure it out. You're on your own. Team UK, are you ready? Hey. Yep. All, All right, here we go. Team UK, what are the biggest changes a salesperson needs to make in the current environment? I can't afford to make this a staycation. What will help me stay successful in the short and long term? Go. I can jump in here. <clears throat> so three, three key things. Number one, classic phrase in sales, never been more real than it is now. The best, the best medication to tough sales times is more pipeline. Um, double down, triple down on prospecting. Make it more of a numbers game. Put more stuff in the top of the funnel and you're going to have more chance of getting, getting deals done. More so now than ever before. So don't suddenly think that you need to hold off for two months because guess what happens in six months' time when this blows over? You're starting from a stand and start again. So put the effort in. Number two, invest in making yourself better. You've probably got more free time available now because of meetings being canceled, deals being closed. Invest time coaching uh, each other. Buddy up with your teammates. Practice your calls. Practice uh, <laughs> practice your, uh, your, your cold calls. Your, your, your refine your messaging. Invest in yourself. Now is the time to make yourself better for when things start normalizing again. Rich, um, just stop. Just stop, Rich. Like you're no, embarrassed. No, you're no, whoa, Richard, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no. Put him on mute, Ben. Put him on mute. Oh, you're oh, Jim. Yeah, I, 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 I hope I'm getting this time back, Daryl. Uh, you are. Number, no, number, <laughs> number, number, number three, re-engage with prospects who didn't buy from you 12 months ago. Everybody's got uh, basically sleeping deals in their pipeline of people in their CRM that were, uh, they were speaking with 12 months ago where there are warm conversations to be had, guess what? You've got one big thing in commonality with that person right now. You're both living through what we're living through. Use that as your, as, as your commonality. And Time is up. All right. Richard. I got to say yeah, two, out of, yeah, two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad, but that's a 66%, and that's a fail if you're in school. So Every <laughs> team gets 30 <laughs> seconds to rebut. And I can tell you which one you got okay. wrong if you want. <laughs> Here we go, guys. 30 seconds to rebut. Starting yeah, I think Rob or Rich wants this. Now. All right, well, I'll start with Rich, you finish. I got, I got so <laughs> excited. Rich, so the first thing that's changed, the first thing that's changed, nothing no, baby. has changed. Nothing has changed. You still have to be ultra personal. You do still have to prospect. It's less of a numbers game. It's more of a quality game. Way, way more. The only thing that's changed, the only thing that's changed is time. That's it. Everything else is still the same, and you've got to slow down. You've got to change Time's your frame of reference. You've got to tell your- Time's up. We're done. That's your answer. You guys got to learn oh, sales 101. Slow. That's your time, and that's it. You wasted. That's on you. You're done. Okay. Two out of three ain't bad. That was the first answer, first response from the first question. Team USA, this is your question. When I finish saying it, the time will begin. You have 90 seconds. Team USA. Uh, as it relates to selling in a pandemic, when the entire world is worried about their health and well-being, how do you approach prospecting such that you don't sound like a selfish, uncaring knob? Go. 
I'm going to jump in there real quick. So first is understanding how the pandemic is impacting your prospects. So the blanket, oh, COVID, the blanket, oh, this is bad, doesn't work. Talk to your customers first and find out how it's impacting your customers. And if you know how it's impacting your customers, then you can use that language going after your prospects, right? And so it's implementing that. Something that we're doing, we know one of our most popular articles right now is on marketing books. So we're sending marketing books out to our prospects because they have the downtime to do it. So use customer language to go to your prospects. Who else? And also I'll add on top of that as well, an ad lib, be relevant, not robotic. So mm-hmm. when, when you're, and when we say lead with empathy, don't be like, oh, hope all is well. Like, no, let's yeah. talk about, hey, yeah. I, I know right now VPs of sales, one of their main problems is keeping their team motivated, inspired while they're working from home. And then I add on to that, right, as prospecting, here's how we help with our solution. So lead with empathy, right? We all know that, but understand the real problems, which to Richard's point, we should be doing this always. Here's what that means. We're all in the same storm, not in the same boat. Find out what boat they're in because the mm. storm affects every boat mm. different. Mm. That's how you do it. That's the answer. Mm. Boom. You got to get somebody to somebody's pain. You're only engaging because you can help solve that pain. All right. So that is one minute, 30 seconds as of now. All right. So that's all right. So, okay. So, so, Team UK, you have 30 so, so seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this one, right? So um, okay, wait, I haven't started yet. Get away. Get away, Alex. I know you're excited. 30 <laughs> seconds to respond. How do you not engage and sound like a knob? Go. So you, you mentioned about um, it, you, it's all about we're on the same storm, but not in the same boat. Some people don't realize what boat they're actually in. What you have to do is you have to start by, by making sure people understand what's going on. And you start by asking the key questions. Like here are the key questions that our customers are asking ourselves right now uh, in terms of the problems they're trying to solve. Bang, 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 bang. If you're in the same situation, I'm curious to learn how you're answering these questions. Here are some examples of how you're going to overcome them. I'm stuck in my bedroom right now. I've got an hour of my time any day for the next month. Time is up. How about we set up a time? All right. So that's your first category, selling in the pandemic. Two questions. Each team's answered it. Each team's rebutted. Now we launch the poll. You, my friends, you, the audience, picks the winner. Which team had the best overall knowledge and understanding of that topic? Let's launch this poll. Let's see. Hopefully it works. I mean, USA did it as a team. Just saying. We all got a little something in there. Just saying. Collective. I mean, by the way, whilst, whilst I was looking at the stats beforehand, there are four times as many people subscribed in the US than there are in the UK right now. So you guys have Thank to get you. four times as many, many Thank results. Thank you. Oh, see, all the trash talking before. <laughs> Divided by four. Roll deep. Oh. We rolled deep. I told you. Why is that our problem, We're Rob? Right. What happened? Hey, you got you to gotta bring out the <laughs> Alex, Rob, Rob, we can't hear you, mate. We can't Rob's muted again. <laughs> <laughs> he broke the All microphone. Right, we're going to share the Off and back on. Here we go. The winner of this one, category number one, you should see is hey. Team oh. USA. Two Fair. to one. Well done. Hey. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Whew, that was exciting. All right. Well so done. that's the well first done. one. Now, while I do some homework here, why don't you guys respond to some of the comments in the, in the chat windows other than the Team UK and Team USA? Anything catch your mind, and I'll prep for the next one. As they all go for you. USA won the first category. All right. Four times the support, only double the votes. We didn't so want to run to the you, Gerald. 67 is a fail. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are now on to the next category. Well next said. category is... Sales Unless it's an election. Sales leadership. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to start it off with Team USA getting the first question on this one. Team USA, as it relates to sales leadership, how do you train sales leaders to actually lead? Most have no clue, no idea how to be a leader. Go. Well, you, first of all, you put the time and energy and effort into it, which is where most people fail and the, and the reason why sales managers don't succeed. Everybody has programs to train sales reps, but you should have a program to train your sales managers as well. And then beyond that, you level up and have a program to train your sales directors. And then you have a program to train people who are directors to become VPs. It's just like anything else, time, interest, effort, focus, right? And get real, real specific. And you've got to be in a place where you have done the role before. So you're speaking from experience and you have this playbook that works. 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to add to that. Most it's, managers are promoted up from being a good sales rep. And so they get to this place where they think that what they did is going to be good for everyone else. They need leadership to tell them, to I help them identify that what they did is good for them and to help them identify that in other sales reps in order to be able to pull that kind of leadership out of the next group of people that they'll be helping. Yeah. The biggest it's thing to no get right is the role. Yeah. You got to get the role right. Too many people don't understand that the role changes. It's not just that the skills change. You still got to connect. You got to solve problems, have them see the future and help them see how to get there. It's not that different from the sales job. It's just that the role, your job is to connect with people and help them improve. And that's where we miss it is we don't teach them how to do that. Instruct, practice, feedback, repeat. It's the same for managers. I role play with my managers. I have scorecards for my managers. I'll sit in on a one-on-one -on -one to give feedback. I record one-on-one -on -one so I can coach them on it, give feedback and repeat. It's no different than what you do with the rep. Time is done. All right. So that was, you know, their response to how do you train sales leaders so they can actually be because most can't. Team UK, you have 30 seconds to respond starting now. So uh, I guess leaders, they move from autonomy to mastery and then to purpose. And my job is to, to guide people, coach people through that journey. They need to be autonomous to start with. They need to be self-managed. They need to master the skill. And then I'm there to help them find their purpose. And the purpose is about developing more people, not money, not products, purely people. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll just come in on that as well. Um, for salespeople who want to become sales managers, don't expect to just happen overnight. Ask your manager how you can get involved in coaching other people on your team. Time is Good. up. All right. Hey, that's, wasn't that supposed that, to be a rebuttal? That I didn't was hear about rebuttal. anything. That's, they can, you're right, they do, no, right? No, no, but they can use their time the any way they want to. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> okay. We're just, we're, just take, we're just taking what you said and made it better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do though. Do Question. Do Team UK. Autonomy, mastery purpose. That's it. That's the your question. What you guys said was just let it fluff. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, as it relates to sales leadership, Team UK. For SDRs, sales development reps that aspire to be in a leadership role, what actions can they take today to establish themselves as a leader with their team and their management? Go. Go on, Rich. I'll take it. Yeah, go Are on, you Sam. Taking it, Rich? Go, cool. Sam. Um, okay, so first of all, activity. So basically, look at the guys in your team that are crushing it, the people that are getting results. Talk to them, find out what they're doing, what's working for them, what's giving them results. If it's putting in the calls, if it's social selling, whatever the heck they're doing, do it, but do it better. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You have to know what works, how people are hitting their number and redo it again. So copy that sequence through and then talk to whoever management is. So if you want to get promoted, say, look, I've proven the last three months I've done X, Y, and Z, I've hit my quota. What can I do to show to you that I can get to this level? Anything yeah. to add, Rich? I'll, I'll just come in there. Is be the person to throw your hat in the ring to say, can I lead the next team coaching session? I want to be that person. Take that job off your shoulders. Let me get the rest of the SDRs in a, in a room and let's break down some calls. Let's review some emails. Let me be the ringleader in that session. Let me prove myself that I've got those capabilities because, if, again, your manager is not just going to – you've got loads of people applying for the same uh, leadership and management roles – they're just sitting there expecting it to, to happen because they've been doing the job for two years. Be the person that says, right. can, I, can I get involved in this, Costas? It's all mindset. It's, it's the active, as if, act as if, act as if you're the manager. You need to be acting as if you are already in the role that you're, you're applying for. It's mindset. Everything starts from the mindset. The skill will come. The support should be there. But it's all act as if. Man management equals Time leadership. is up. Time is up. Team USA, to... you have 30 seconds to respond to the question that for SDRs that aspire to be in a leadership role, what actions can they take now? And go. So real quick, I'm going to disagree on one of the points. There are actual like, disagreements here of trying to be the number one rep versus trying to have the number one impact across the org. If you're going to put in energy to be the number one rep, that's different than putting in the energy on how to be a good leader, which was the question. They should be putting time into getting mentors outside of their company or around leadership, reading leadership books, right? Asking how they can be leading, asked to be coached on how to be a leader. So being the number one rep doesn't mean that's your path to being the number one leader on the team. Anyone else USA? You're done. Make sure you, make sure you find ways to have organizational impact, done. not individual impact. No more done. 30 seconds done. You now have had two questions with two responses and two answers from each team on sales leadership. We are going to go over here and launch that funky little poll where you get to decide which team best represented the knowledge and the insights as it relates 
to sales leadership. And here we go. I want to say something real quick. It has nothing to do with the question, but this whole four to one ratio, does that mean the UK only got 66 people to show up to this? Yeah, that's like, right. You got to bring out the boat. <laughs> like, oh, four to one. You got 66 people. You guys roll six deep each. Like, come on now. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they doing? It's because we're on celebrities. Where do I just do it? We're getting on with the job in hand. That's, 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 that's oh, my God. Weak. Oh. Weak. <laughs> wow. Oh my Eight. God. <laughs> All right. We're going to close the poll. The winner on the sales leadership question. Yeah, we got a question. Let's go. Let's go. I like oh, it. I like it. Team go. USA, 70%. I like it. I like it. Team UK, Good job, 30%. Team. Good job, Team USA. Boom. Keep Just bringing it. Right. Costas, your answer didn't deserve that. Oh, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, they, they talk for about 10 minutes making the same point from a different angle. <laughs> and you go there with three words. This guy's you lost it. Sorry, that, that, Daniel Penn has lost his mind. But a world, world-renowned author has written, and people say, oh, no, no, TV USA. And if my ridiculous. aunt had nuts, she'd be my uncle. Let's go. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. We're going to move it along to the next category as I get everything already here. The next category is on cold calling, and there's many a disciple on this webinar today who profess to be rock stars at cold call. So we're going to start with Team UK getting the first question, and it's an interesting question. Team UK, what can we do to remove the entitlement from account executives who think cold calling is beneath them and for SDRs only. Go. Uh, right, okay. Um, uh, tell, <laughs> tell, tell, them if, tell, tell them if they don't do it, there's not a place on the bus for them. There's my, there's my point. Don't be, as a leader, you, are, you should be making sure that your salespeople, no matter what role they're doing, are looking after their own pipeline. I say looking after their own pipeline that means that you've got to take responsibility of it. And if you think you're above prospecting, then ultimately what that person is admitting is that they're an average sales rep. That, 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 that bottom line is that they, they are prepared to sit there and expect somebody else to fill the calendar. If yeah. you've got that mentality of someone who is expectant, who feels they're above it, who doesn't want to make their pipeline as big as it possibly should be, you've probably got the wrong person on the bus because they've got the wrong attitude. So um, th it's, a very, it's a very tough decision to make. But if you've got people like that, um, I, I personally, they haven't got a place on my sales team. I know that. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that, Rich. Um, I think you've got to really show the value to the entire organization that BDRs are like the, the real breadwinners. They are the ones that keep, particularly in SaaS, they are the ones that make, that make the company grow. That if without them, you would have nothing. Right. Next week, my job title changes to BDR because I'm going to be sitting next to my BDRs doing it. I'm doing it at the moment. I'm cold calling and I'm one of the founders. Right. I still prospect. Everyone knows in my business that you should always be calling and you should always be doing that because it's one of the most valuable exercises you can do. Lead by All example. Right. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just add, a, add a bit extra in there. Some of the best ways to get better in sales are better conversations. Out of time. Get... Apologize, but you had a minute and a half. You did well. All right. Team USA, you get a chance to respond. You're going to have 30 seconds. Again, the question is, how do we remove the entitlement from account executives who think cold calling is beneath them and for SDRs only? You've heard Team UK's position. Team USA, go. Well, first of all, we remove the fear-based leadership that UK Rich is talking about, about kicking people off the bus. Secondly, we recognize that the SDR role is infinitely harder than the AE role, all right? And they should be compensated accordingly. And then third, <clears throat> everybody in the organization picks up the phone, hits the emails, hits LinkedIn, and, and, and goes after the omni-channel approach because everybody is in the same position right now. All of us need what, to do whatever we can do to keep the company and the job and, and our jobs afloat, right? 30 Three seconds. Things. Done. That's the rebut. That's the first question in the category. We now move to the second question in the category that Team USA will answer. They'll have 90 seconds. Team USA, on the topic of cold calling, what are the right key performance indicators to measure around cold calling? Is it dials? Is it talk times? Is it connect rates? Is it restate relationships established? You tell me. You have a chance to, to, to answer. 90 seconds, go. I'll jump in, start it. Uh, there are a couple things. So one, it's not a single metric, it's a combination. I think that one, you do have to look at connect rates. Um, I do think you have to look at conversations 
and then conversions, conversions. So making sure that you understand what's happening in that conversation to convert it to another meeting. And you may have to redefine your conversion right now. It may not be a traditional convert to an opportunity as much as it is convert to a deeper qual call discovery or demo with a future close date, right? Take that pressure off the prospect so you can have that meaningful conversation so that as we move back to hopefully a, a new state of normal, um, those conversations will stick. And I'll let someone else jump in on US. Something that not a lot of companies track is the actual disposition, why they're not converting. So it's not just that it would, didn't convert, it's why. What was the objection or where did you get stuck or where did the call end? Now you know how to fix the DM conversion rate. If all the DM conversion rates are not because it's not interested, now I can do coaching on not interested objection handling and actually fix the metric. So it's connect, it's conversion, but also why are they not converting? That call disposition, that's also what you track so that you can create coaching plans around it. Because it's about results, whether they're good results or bad results, we have to measure results because we don't oh. have number one yeah. reps inside of organizations yes. without results to begin with. Let's move go, past the volume, move to the conversion. <laughs> Boom. And Rob, you are now <laughs> over the time. That's it. Minute and a half. <laughs> okay. I just want to, you know, Richard, you were getting some, some kudos from the crowd there. Nikki Ivy uh, gave you bonus points for your alliteration. So celebrate that little victory. Okay. Team UK, <laughs> you get 30 seconds to, res to respond to the cold calling thing around what are the right KPIs to measure. It is your turn to go now. Number one is meetings booked with a qualified prospect you can buy, right? And you should also be measuring that against the other channels that you are measuring. Is email failing? Some industries, email does not work. LinkedIn does not work. If cold calling is your top metric, you should be measuring like meetings booked with a qualified prospect you can buy. That's it. All that other stuff from you US guys is fluff. It's about getting in front of the right person you can buy. <laughs> to, 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 totally agree. I mean, what, what, what do we talk about? What are we? What are we targeting? Prospect uh, the, the salespeople on the end of the day. We, we're, we're over complicated. Time is up. That's your thirty seconds. Okay, so you've had the two questions asked and the responses all around cold calling. It is now <laughs> over to you, my friends in the audience. Uh, here we go. We're going to launch the poll. Who won the cold calling round? Go. Hey, everybody out there should. Uh take some screenshots of their, of their computer right now. The, the, the sheer ridiculousness of this whole spectacle deserves to be publicized. <laughs> Seriously. Totally agree, Scott. Totally agree. Everybody out there know that we appreciate the hell out of you. Oh, and we hope that will bring a little bit of joy to you today. Keep voting for UK. Come on. Oh, huh. oh my God. I think it's, is it a tie? That's 30 seconds. Oh my Ooh. goodness. Okay. Let me share the results. That's what we call a tie. We didn't what? plan. What? We're not playing soccer. Okay. To right. 96. <laughs> How do you figure that out? <laughs> we do. This could be interesting. <laughs> we didn't plan for a tie. All right. Let's stop that sharing. Okay. The sharing, sharing is stopped. Oh, my God. All right. I made it up. Where, where? I didn't get to see the results, though. I didn't either. Like I'm yeah. sorry. I did share them. Let me see if I can try it oh. again. Share the results. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh. Wow. Hey, that's legit. Wow. That that's is legit. legit. That's legit. Who won the cold call? Well, legit when you have two thirds of the audience is US. It's yeah, awesome. you got a whole bunch of people <laughs> saying <laughs> they didn't get I, the I poll. I would, oh, I would they like didn't get the poll. One, I would like to make one point up there. Yeah. Everyone who's watching out there. Like, it's really, really hard right, to take tips from, from senior management about <clears> cold calling. <throat> the thing that I do is I do it with my reps, right? And like, I, I, I show them that I can do it. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I teach them to do it myself. Yeah, right. If you're, if you're, if you're, you're taking instructions. Two thousand and eight as well. What? We're all, we're all in agreement on that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What was that cost right. us? <laughs> we're gonna move it along, guys, because I just want to re represent the the time that we promised to meet everybody. So the next one up is email. All right, Asta, that's you. Email. <laughs> we're gonna start off. <laughs> yeah. Team UK getting the first chance to answer. Team UK the topic of email. How do you make email stand out without being an opportunistic asshole? This is from the audience. Go. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, I think to understand the question is an opportunistic, we're relating the current situation. Um, 
ultimately what your prospects, they don't care about the current situation as such, the specific topic. They care about how you can help them right now. Um, there's a big shift about, there's about 20, 30% shift um, this year compared to last year of prospects who are looking for uh, people to help them with a leaning towards saving money versus uh, actually uh, 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 gaining more revenue. So shift your message about helping that company save money versus gain money. And that's maybe one way to, to actually speak to what the market are looking for right now. Um, don't make, it, make, make your solution specific about a problem that they're going to be facing. Um, I, I don't, I don't see any, I don't see this being a big, I think this is a, a, there's a bigger problem made of this than, than there actually is. Some of your customers might need your product and service more than they've ever needed before. That's what we've seen in, 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 in our world. Um, it's not opportunistic. You're, as long as you're speaking of a problem that they want to solve, I don't really see what the actual problem is. Yeah. yeah I, I, would, I just like to add to that, like add value, right? Put value into your emails. Don't always ask from the very first email you send. Don't just say, can I get a meeting? Can I get a meeting? I want to get something out of you. Add value. That, that's how you do it. Yeah. I would, I would add as well, be different because there's so many generic emails and the amount of emails I get that aren't even tailored. So do a bit of research, check someone out on LinkedIn, put a little stat that's actually personal relevant to them. So you're standing out from the thousands of emails in their inbox and then CTA. Team All USA, right. you have 30 seconds to respond. Right. The question was, how do you make email stand out without being perceived as an opportunistic asshole? Go. So be funny. Go Google your persona meme, persona what I hate, persona funny coffee mug, persona funny poster, persona funny t-shirt. Get what the persona thinks is funny. Put that shit into your emails. That's what makes you not look like an asshole. So we need to try to pretend not to be an asshole that it's worse. Be funny. Go find out what your prospect thinks is funny. Put it into your emails. Also, be relevant. Experience. Think about the three to, four, three to four words that are in the first iteration of your email um, because most emails are read on mobile. So if you can capture the attention of the three to four words, is, that's what matters. All right. So even though Richard's trying to jump in here, I will compliment him. He's prolific on the chat. So watch what he's doing there. He is consistently calling out Dan Disney, I have observed. So there we go. Next question. In the category of email, we're going to ask Team USA the following question. They'll have 90 seconds to respond. Team USA, many people are saying that email is just dead. Dead. How can reps use email to get results, get responses, and get engaged? Go. It's dead because they're writing super wordy emails like the guys in the UK are talking about right now. You need to be short, concise, and to the point instead of emails, and you need to create an experience for the person that's reading them. That You don't need to be sitting there thinking about the clickbait subject line. Morgan made a great point about a couple words at the very front of your email. People are going to be attracted to how can you get to the point quickly, give me an experience, create some relevance, be funny like KD talked about, and, and just be better at sending emails in general. Also, let's just stop telling people to quote, add value and not telling them what yeah. the fuck that means. <laughs> Dumbest thing to say ever. What the hell does that even mean? Can we share an article? Can we share an article relevant add value. to There's one way to add value. value. For nothing. Can we share stats and data relevant to them? Give, give them actual things. Don't just say, hey, everybody, add value. Make it an article, a podcast, stats, data, a customer that they can connect with that's been through the same thing as them. Something tangible. The you single some data best as well, two to five value. sentences. Hold on. The single best thing you can do to add value is send value and don't ask for a meeting. Don't ask for a phone call. Don't do anything. Just send the value, whether it's the article, the link, the tip, whatever it is. No, that's what I was going to write on that. The one thing is first part relevant, two second, what's that value pop? Third is a frictionless call to action, which is Richard saying, opens to learning more. Do you want a deeper dialogue? Those three things in that email are going to get that response. If they can't use it, it's not valuable. Okay. We'll call it there. You were two seconds to spare. Team USA. Team UK. That's efficiency, Daryl. Team U it is efficiency. <laughs> well done. We need to make it up because Harris was late. Um, so this is great. So Team uh, UK, you got to respond to this. And they were getting a lot of applause. Nikki Ivey again being vocal amongst others on that one. The question was, uh, as it relates to email, many are saying email is dead. How can reps use email to get results, get responses, and get engaged? Your response, 30 seconds, go. Listen, I'm, I'm not an expert on email, but uh, as a buyer, and as <laughs> yeah, as we know that. <laughs> can I get those seconds back, please? Yeah, I, yeah. I, told, I told my guys that they, we need to, uh, literally the subject matter is, is the need that we, um, we, we, we serve, uh, and then you reference people that you've worked with, 
So you have a, 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 a solution for someone, keep it short, no more than three paragraphs, no more than three sentences per paragraph. No, not, not a call to action apart from, can we have a conversation? And that's pretty much uh, it. Time. I do not understand all the value. And SDR right now does not know what value should, what article to send to, to, to me. Okay, time, it's, time's, it's up. time's up, time's up. Okay, so that is, if I'm looking at this right, the email category, yep, both questions have been asked. I haven't lost my mind. So we're at that stage again. Currently, after three questions, it's two nothing for the USA because the third question was a tie. No one got the point. So we're gonna launch the poll for the email question. We wanna know who won. Your chance to vote, audience. The poll is live now. Please go vote. Man, an SDR should know what to send you, Costas. I don't buy that yes. at all. Yeah. No, that's, 100%. That's absolutely no, yeah, they no should. way. No way. That's why we've been getting so much, so much crap because someone said, hey, listen, add value. Sent an article. That's you be getting so much it just crap means you don't know your you crap. don't know your customers or the usage situations. You got to know the customer and the usage. Bad leadship, situation. Costas. That's because yeah, leadership yeah. hasn't taught them what to do. Exactly. Yeah, bad, 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 bad coaching. I don't, I, don't see, bad I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. You guys talk about AEs. People who have experience. They've been in the industry for for years. What? That can work absolutely. And SDR does not know how to do that. It appears not, email has got the crew riled up. The only thing. <laughs> The they final do, decider they, they in this can't. one is going to be who won the poll. Let the audience decide, and the audience has decided. Hey, hey, hey. Landslide, we babe. stay lit. Dupree. We stay lit. Dupree. Hey. <laughs> can can anyone right. help tell me what, what getting lit means? It's strange. Oh, what's that? Actually, we, we have a second, right? We have a second because there's a good comment in here that, that sports out some U.S. females for the next event. Nikki Ivey, Beck that. Holland, Lori Richardson, Cynthia Barnes, Lauren Bailey, Colleen yeah. Stanley. I would I'm add really Tabitha good. Cavanaugh to that. And uh, uh, one of our coaches here at the Sales Rebellion, Joy Hewitt Carvajal as well, too. Anybody else you, want to add to that? Sam I, McKenna. I, I won't add to the list no, right Sam now, McKenna, but I tell, so you what I, I tell you what I will do. I will commit to organizing the uh, sequel to this event and putting together yep. the, the, the event and, and the female teams against each other. And, uh, and the USA team will dominate on that one just like we are. Exactly. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> time to move on. This next one is interesting because there have been many comments from the crowd that Dan Disney has been a bit quiet. People wonder if he's <laughs> yeah, what is Canadian it? On, because he's being so polite. So this category is on social selling. If Dan Disney right, is I'm quiet here, <laughs> then this is not Dan Disney. All right, so let's start the clock. The question is gonna go to the King whiskey. He better first. deliver, he better freaking deliver. He's he's feeling, look, look at the stress, he's feeling it. <laughs> Come on, the audience man. is pulling for you, man. The audience is Come pulling on, for you. Me. Here we go. <laughs> for Team UK, you have 90 seconds to respond. I wonder who's gonna answer first. <laughs> Many people confuse social selling with personal branding. Can you explain the differences between the two? Go. Very good question. Key thing about social selling is you are selling, you are starting a conversation. Personal branding is a reputation. It can be heavily measured by marketing metrics. It's how people see you, how people respect you. It's built through sharing content, giving value, um, you know, sharing things relevant to your buyer. Social selling is where you use personal branding. You use all that wonderful stuff, the content, your profile and everything to start conversations. You send them messages, you send video messages, you send audio messages, you start proactive conversations that the you then turn into sales pipeline. Social selling is exactly that. It's selling. Personal branding is what you do as part of the process. You share content. You are active. You're on LinkedIn or any other social media network on a consistent daily basis. You're engaging in industry relevant content, sharing industry relevant content, and then you become a salesperson and you look at the views, you look at the comments, you look at the likes, you look at the shares and you message them. You qualify, you find the prospects, you send them messages, you start conversations, turn those into phone calls, turn them into Zoom calls, turn them into face-to-face -face meetings when everything's back to normal. Selling is about selling, personal branding and marketing is what you fuel into that to create those opportunities. Oh, that's what you call that getting, that's what you call getting lit. That's 45 minutes of pent up. <laughs> Seems like you you have to get ten seconds. Seconds. Let's add. <laughs> He's done, okay, we'll call it. They're more well efficient than Team USA was last question. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, Team USA. The Dan Disney, Mr. Social Selling himself, has responded. In less than 90 seconds, you get 30 to respond to the question. 
Many people confuse social selling with personal branding. Can you explain the differences between the two? Go. I think what a lot of salespeople are missing right now is how they should be building their brand. Every salesperson is trying to build their brand as a salesperson. They're all trying to give sales tips. They're all trying to give their sales insights versus building their brand in their industry, right? So it, it, it kind of overlaps if you do it the right way, right? The brand that um, Dupree has built in his industry is then what allowed him to elevate eventually to also then do the sales branding as well. But his brand came in his industry first and then it went outside. That's how I think they need to overlap is build a brand within your industry yeah. and then elevate. Okay. Good. Very that good. was good. That good. was good. Okay. It, it didn't um, get a boom from Bob Jepson, so it's not, not good. Boom! I swear that Dan Disney brought his fan club with him because when he was talking, that chat window was on fire. Yeah, I see it. I, see I didn't it. even notice I was in a different <laughs> zone. Team USA. <laughs> Now's your chance. Second question as it relates to social selling. What is your advice for somebody who wants to get better at social selling, but their ICP, their ideal customer profile does not appear to be active on social channels? Go. Mm. All right. So best way to go about this is first and foremost, you got to go talk to the sales reps that are targeting those personas, reach out to them, get the context on how they're going after those people. Then you can take that information with those sales reps to then figure out how to go target all those personas across the board and to get into those organizations as well. And also by looking at people that maybe are not as active on LinkedIn, they still have mutual connections, connect with those people on leads that follow that company and then connect with those people to get internal referrals. Yeah. Just because Con your decision maker isn't on social doesn't mean that their employees aren't and that they're super active and they are the most vocal people inside of the organization in most cases and the reason why the decision maker even chooses to buy a product in the first place to help the company. So go after the individuals. It's not a waste of time. Yeah. Boom. I'll, I'll take it a step further and try to educate those people on the value of the platform itself. I was in the title insurance industry and nobody was on social. So I taught my whole team about how to social sell. And my team went and taught people in the industry and brought those people from the industry onto the platform. So we passed the education on down to the, the buyers that we were trying to get at. Yeah. Content and channel are two different things. You can take the social content and put it in the channel that your ICP prefers. So you can still grab shit from LinkedIn or grab shit from Facebook or grab it from Twitter and put it into the channel they like, whether that's email, phone call, video, direct mail. So you can bridge them together. Time. That was Team oh, USA for 90 seconds on the so question. Good. Dan, you ready to go again? Oh, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> Dan, Dan's bobbing. He's Wait. bobbing. Let's he's go. Bobbing. He's bobbing. <laughs> he's right. Question, he's ready. remember, 30 seconds. You'll have to do two. What is your advice for somebody who wants to get better at social selling, but their ICP does not appear to be active on social channels? Go. First, big respect to Dale. Best point about uh, multiple decision makers and other people within the organizations. A really good point. Another thing to think about is other social networks. We talked about LinkedIn, you know, prospects might be using Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Look at where they might be sitting. If it's on a different social, they could be on TikTok. Everyone uses different platforms. <laughs> don't make assumptions. Don't generalize either. Just because some might not be on LinkedIn doesn't mean they're all not on LinkedIn. And to echo Scott's point, you know, you will bring them on. This is a transition. There are new members joining LinkedIn all the time. So lead, be the person to bring them in. Give time. them big groups, et cetera. Done. Okay, so there you have so it, kids. As it relates to social like M &M, selling, man. so fast. Social <laughs> selling. Go, which team it. had it best? <laughs> team USA or Team UK? Vote. You gotta give Double D that energy award right there. Yeah, he came yeah, alive. Yeah, he brought it. Right? He's been saving it up. <laughs> He's build it up. Build it up. Bring it up. That energy. I think That's what's great, like about that people. actually, and for everybody listening and watching, is to understand that like, when you're in your wheelhouse and you're oh, Daryl, there's no poll. I don't think. I see that. I'm go. gonna try it again here. Let it go. It says it's pole. Double D's here. going back to his bottle yeah. now. There's another. Me. There's another <laughs> lesson here though too. There's another lesson here though too that that maybe Daniel should learn is don't don't start don't wait to start battling until you're already down three nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, it's garbage maybe bring time. The fire from the start. <laughs> yeah. Disney, what are you drinking, by the way? Like, I'm really jealous. Yeah, what right is now, that? Guy? It's uh, Jack Daniels, but the honey Jack Daniels. Oh, nice. it's actually okay. really, that is a really good choice. Very, very, uh, goes really well uh, with cloudy lemonade. Very Daniel. American. Very, very, very I American. That's American. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> 
Oh my All God. right, I'm ending the Did poll. Did they just call that a chick drink? <laughs> any, guess, <laughs> any guesses on who won here? Oh. Any guesses? Boom! Oh. 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 Energy. Team UK is on Indeed. the board. Look at that. Social selling belongs to the Brits. All right, good stuff. Whew. Right, with that one said, let's move it on to the next category. The next category, it's been just discussed already here in some of the <clears throat> answers. It's all around establishing value. It's all around establishing value. So we're gonna start off with Team USA this time. You're gonna have 90 seconds. And this, my friends, is your question. What is the best way to tackle? Yeah, that sounds okay, but I'm just not sure the ROI is there. Go. Never been well, about ROI, ever. It's always yeah. been about economic impact. You have to be able to show them how the, they're currently doing the process is costing them real money, real money. What project are they being delayed on? Everything that's on their to-do list that every single person in the world has, right? What could they do if they got more efficient with certain things by having your product? They could then go do things with the things on their to-do list that drive more revenue. That's what economic impact is. That's not ROI, that's economic impact. Nobody believes the R, right? They only believe the I. I learned that actually right. from Mr. Jepson right here. So that's right. They only look at the investment, never the revenue. They never believe it. Anyone so let's else? talk about that. The number one talent that you need to have to get over this is what I call dollarizing. Start and where you are. What's the problem you want to solve or the result you want to achieve? That's the only way you can be valuable. What is it now? That's question one. What do you want it to be? What's the value of the difference? What's the value of the difference over time? You under understand those things, you got something to talk about. But if you don't understand those things, you shouldn't be talking about your product anyway. You got to dollarize the value of the problem you're solving, not the value or the impact. You cross your fingers and hope that if they implement it right, you'll create. So understand before you ever talk about your product that you are dollarizing the value of the problem. You do that, it'll change your world. Jepson's on fire. Okay, you're out of time. There we go. That was that dollarize, was exciting. Baby, dollarize. Establishing dollarize. Value. Dollarize. 30 dollarize. Seconds Say all the dollarize. 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 Pound eyes? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Team UK, you have 30 seconds to respond to the question. What's the best way to tackle the objection? Eh, it sounds okay, but I'm just not sure the ROI is there. Go. Go on, Rich. You can go first. Um, I was going to say the problem is when you got that objection, it's probably too late actually to avoid getting that objection. It needs to happen much earlier on because you get that objection because the person you haven't actually identified a compelling reason why that, 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 that the problem that they want to solve. You get that objection, it's probably end game if I'm being brutally honest. You need to you need to avoid getting that objection by doing a better job up front, by doing better discovery, by helping to quantify the problem. Once you get the person to admit that they've got a problem. You then work with them to build the business case to define the ROI. If, you, if you're getting hit with, we don't see the ROI Good in this, time. it's end game. So didn't he just basically say we were right, guys? I think that's I what he said. We're, dollars, we're right. That's that dollar eyes. I think he just said dollar eyes. I saw sterling <laughs> eyes in there too, which is fantastic. Okay, second question for the establishing value category. We're going to go to Team UK. You have 90 seconds. This was a little longer. I'll read it off, and then when I'm done, you can go. Here we go. How do you know when you have enough, when you've built enough value? How can you tell if a prospect truly understands why they need to solve the pain they're experiencing versus just wanting you to push ahead towards price or feature dumping? Go. I think the first, the, there, there are four ways of answering this, right? <clears throat> you know when you have four things. You have business value, you have financial value, you have user value, and you have solution value, right? If you can quantify all of those four at the same time and you can see that in a mutually beneficial time frame where you can build a reverse timeline and say, we're going to get all four of these complete for you, then your prospect will know that you have true value and, and true ROI from the product and the problem you're going to solve. Those are the four things that, that, that I think are really important. I don't know if anyone wants to build on that. I, th I, th I think for me, it comes down to personal motivation. Like that, that is for me, traditionally, that, that's most, most of the people who have bought off me is, is because they've known that they can personally succeed. So it comes like let the, the value is and actually what will working with you and using your product help that person achieve? And that, and that could be helping them get the, the, getting their promotion, get more respect off their team members, helping them uh, achieve a, a critical objective. 
unless you've got personal motivation, you're not going to build genuine champions who are actually going to drive and, and, and help you succeed in, 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 in your opportunities. They're not going to pull the decision makers, the people who sign the checks into the conversation. You've got to get that person, have a personal motivating factor and get to that level of conversation where they say things like, you know what, if I achieve this objective, it means I can get the pay rise. It means I can get the promotion. It means I can, you know, get 20,000 more on my, on, my, on my paycheck at the end of this year. That's that. That for me is above, any, above anything. It's personal motivation to buy. Yeah, okay, and I'd you admit are, you're out of time there, folks. Don't. That's okay. You asked. You get thirty seconds to respond to recap. The question was, how do you know when you have built enough value? How can you tell if a prospect truly understands why they need to solve the pain they're experiencing versus just wanting you to push ahead towards price or feature dumping? Go. Well, when you finish dollarizing, you ask three questions. You know, how important is it? how how important is it? What are you looking at? What happens if you do? And what happens if you don't? If you don't know the answer to those things, what's the point? And listen to Richard Harris. If you're talking ROI, that's a defensive move, not an offensive move, and you're not connecting with people. I would also add that the, that the prospect will tell you. They'll say yeah. it back to you. They'll, They'll agree it. with you. They'll say, okay, I get it. I have this particular problem. I have this particular mm -hmm. issue. I understand the value in solving that. I understand the urgency required to fix it. They'll tell you. That's when right. you know you've, you've done it. There's your 30 seconds, folks. So we've asked them two questions in the establishing value category. Once again, we go to you to decide who the winner is of this category. Just a reminder, the score is currently three to one, but the lightning round is 10 rapid fire questions. So don't let the score deceive you. That's going to be one on one. Okay, kids, establishing value. Let's launch the poll. Team USA, Team UK, who do you think won that discussion? The poll should be live now. I'm not hey, sure. hey, 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 shout out. Hey. All right. Good team. Good team. Zoom is doing a great job. It's relaunches again. It's acting up on me. Alex is going for another bottle already. There I respect it. I respect yeah. it. Okay. I see you. No, I'm not. I'm bringing a friend. I thought he didn't want to be seen yeah. crying on camera. Hey. Alex, Ollie, What's bringing up, in a ringer. Frank the Tank is in the house. The reinforcement. Secret nice. weapon. Yeah, you see that mini me with the uh, Liverpool kit on? Right. Yeah. That's for you, Costas. <laughs> the real question uh, is all the, are all the kids I'll logged in and voting. What? Okay. Hmm? We are done that vote. This was close. Closer than I expected. Let's see if you guys can see the results. All right. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Dub's a dub. We'll, we'll take the dub. Take the dub, man. Dub's a dub. Yep. Whoa. Who? Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 All right, Richard with the sneak share. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So we know that oh uh, Team gosh. USA won the sixth Richard. category. <laughs> now on to our seventh. You can mute him, but you can't stop him. Okay. Oh god. Seventh category is all around coaching. Coaching. Here we go. All right, here we go. Team UK, you're going to get the, uh, the first kick of the can here, okay? What are the three things I have to get right as a sales leader right now? Go. Costas? As a sales leader in terms of coaching, um, poor. Um, I suppose uh, the, the part is not the training. The part is in the application of the training. So a lot of people focus on, on having the, 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 the perfect training and then they drop off. It's all about the follow-up. My rule is that when you deliver training, you need to have three subsequent meetings. One is to check understanding because then we have questions. Another meeting is to them to run back to you exactly what they've learned. The third meeting is to actually have them run the training to someone else because only then you know that they've understood the training, they uh, applied it, and they can now train it to someone else. And that's the uh, only advice I can give in terms of training and coaching. Yeah, I think I think for me the, another key objective of coaching is actually is is, is this person achieving their goals. Um, so I think right now, especially in the the situation that we're in right now, people are feeling more vulnerable than ever. People are isolated more than ever from their teammates, from their managers. You need to be having regular conversations, one to ones, where it's about how can I understand the anxieties that you may have right now because sales just got a lot lot, lot tougher. And then driving that, that coaching conversation around maybe rejigging some of the objectives and, and uh, KPIs that they, that they would normally have and, and, and helping them through that. And, and, and that, 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 again, it has to be aligned to what is that person trying to achieve? 
is it promotion? Is it more money? Is it, uh, is it wanting to be a, a, a player coach? Time so, All right. Team USA, you get to respond to the question, what are the three things I have to get right as a sales leader right now? Since this is a rebuttal, you should have heard three things and I just heard fluff. I'll give you three things because modern sales changed in the last three weeks. These are three things to get right. Number one, we're committed to yourself, your, your health, safety, your safety and health. Number two, we understand how the mechanics of the job have changed. The process is the same, mechanics are different. We're gonna make sure you know how to do that. Number three, our commitment to your ongoing development has not changed and you will progress faster with us than anywhere else you go. Get those three, three, three things right and you're gonna be all right. Boom. Okay. Boom. Oh, 28 <laughs> seconds. So look at that. He's a rock star. All right. So Yield our the time back to the other side. On the coaching side, but the <laughs> discussion is not over. We have one more. And we're going to start off with Team USA. This is your question. You have 90 seconds to answer it. How do you keep coaching from being micromanagement? How do you coach high performers? Go. It's twofold. It's one, the mindset, like most high performers, Kobe, Jordan, whoever you want to talk about, they never stopped practicing. So that starts in the hiring process is making sure you're getting the right people hired in. But then the coaching with top performers, it's coaching them on different things. I think you don't have to coach everyone the same. Everyone can get better, but the coaching at the top is different than the coaching at the bottom and also involving your top to coach the bottom. If you want to coach the top better, involve them in coaching the bottom and they buy in a lot faster. We're going to add to that. I'm glad you started, Katie. Here's how we're going to take this next level. The, one of the biggest mistakes that coaches make is they talk about the past. You want to know why people feel micromanaged? Because they're justifying what they did. You want your coaching to be next level and like high quality stuff that people are excited about. 90% of your time is on the future, not on the past. I don't care if they're a high performer or a new one. Talk about where they're going, not where they've been, and you will find that coaching becomes highly effective. You teach them things that they don't know. For example, how to manage all this money that they just came into for the first time. There's a difference between getting a hundred thousand dollars in your paycheck versus two fifty versus five hundred versus seven fifty. Most people who are in sales who start to get to these higher levels have no clue what to do with that money, and they flash it all around and they squander it. So one of the things you do is teach them and educate them about other far, other facets of adulting. Okay, you're you're ten seconds early. Look at you guys bringing it. UK, you've got 30 seconds to respond. The question to remind folks is, how do you keep coaching from being micromanagement? How do you coach high performers? Go. You've got to, but you've got to start by differentiating between coaching and training. A lot of leaders forget that, that training is a very different uh, mentality from coaching. So training is about like just transferring knowledge and coaching is about enhancing knowledge or skills. And, and as Rob said, looking to the future, you do it on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, you do it on a development focus basis and you, and you do it by having a two-way feedback loop, right? If you do that right, then you will, will, you will remove yourself from a training example to one where you're actually coaching someone and you're helping them in their unique situation. Time's yeah. up. You need to be coaching well the small person, not just the sales person. So if people feel that time's up, up. Time's, time's up. up. Time's, time's up. Time's up. Where's, up, where's what the hell? Time's, time's, time's up. Where's he, time's up. Where's he at? Okay. Three so, zero. Three zero. <laughs> we're going to find out. The score currently is four to one US over the UK. Four one one. Launch the poll four, one, one. on Don't coaching. Don't forget about the draw. It is four. You're right. Four. Remember, one. Team USA told you how to train people. Yes. We told you how to coach people. No, oh, we did not. We talked about coaching. Yeah, you did. Oh, 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 oh. No. I talked. I talked about educating people as they increase their income level. One day, one day when you cross that hundred thousand dollar threshold, I'll teach you. Yeah. <laughs> we did not mention training at all. <laughs> Just trying to get the polls up as we Jeez. get closer to it, Rob. <laughs> Audience, the usual 30 seconds to do their votes, and then and we're almost there. We're about five seconds out. And then I think this is the last question, folks. Now is the lightning round will be next. I'm going to end yes. that poll and we're going to show Go. you the results. Hey, dub's a dub. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Dubs. <laughs> Team USA won 58% to 42% for the coaching rounds. So we're going to give Team USA that victory. Good for them. They lead this initial around the horn you know, round, if you will, leading five to one. We did have one tie. So of a possible seven points, they got five and the UK got one. But now, Aww. now this is where it gets really interesting because the UK's, the fans out there are thinking, well, we're screwed. We can't catch up. That's insurmountable. No, no, no. There's 10 questions here. Whoever gets the most, you, you know, 
10 questions. You could, you can't get easy to come back. These are quick and dirty questions. Okay. So I'm going to pair these up one-on-one, -on -one, not team on team. First person to jump in with the correct answer gets it. If you get the answer wrong, you're done. You step to the side and the other person has as much time as they want to to answer it. Are we ready, kids? Rally cap. Rally caps. Team yeah, rally caps, caps boys. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, Dorsey. <laughs> yeah. Hard work being a Yes. Yeah. 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 We're like going to stop singing like <laughs> Yes. Okay, here we go. Team USA will be represented by Richard Harris. Team UK by Alex Ali. Here's the question. Whoever jumps in with the right answer first gets it right. What percentage We're of the buyers... We're the best ones ever. Right, wrong. Really Alex, so I'll finish the question. Yeah. Alex, the question now is to you, <laughs> what percentage of buyers trust sales reps? It, do I have to get as close to it as possible? As to close, as close to. Well, well you're going to win. I can say anything. I can say anything. Um, yes, you can. I'd say, I'd say it's uh, 28%. Okay. Or, so the UK won that one. And no, the answer, they get one point. The answer is 3% <laughs> of buyers trust sales reps. One nothing for the UK. I believe that. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Can, somebody, can somebody mute Richard? There just we go. Richard. Next question. <laughs> no, no, no. Ben, don't mute him. Don't mute him. Just, just let Richard speak. <clears throat> it's oh, going to be goodness. Scott Lees from Team US against Costas Perkis from Team UK. Here's the question. Prospects think 50% of reps are pushy. What percentage of reps consider themselves pushy? 10. 20%. 25%. 25. 35 and 10. 25. 25. 25. 25 and 10. Oh my. The correct answer is 17, which is seven away from Scott, eight away from Costas. Team USA gets the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's 1 1 on the lightning round. Next one Rob Jepson, you're up against the Dan Disney. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Boom. Boom. Let's look. Not social. Don't make it social. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he hasn't said a word on anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Prospecting, qualifying, or closing. What do reps feel is the most challenging part of the sale? Prospecting. Rob Justin said prospecting no, first. I heard Rob say prospecting first. The answer is... Prospect. Prospecting. If you're curious, oh. let's get it. Let's get it. So not only was that first, I was is, right. Disney was wrong. <laughs> prospecting is 40%, qualifying <laughs> is 22%, and closing is 36%. So it's 2-1 USA. <laughs> Question number four, it's going to be Kevin Dorsey up against Richard Smith. This is question number four, 2-1 USA. On a first call, what percentage of buyers want to discuss pricing? 67. 70, 75%. The answer is 60%. Kevin Dorsey oh, brings it. Man. Man. Yeah. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Oh, fire. All right. <laughs> Three to one US. We're now going to the fifth question. Yes. All right. This is going to be Morgan Ingram up against Sam Dunning. All right. According to the Bridge Group, what's the average number of attempts required to reach a prospect? 12. Eight. The answer is 9.2. Looks like Sam Dunning gets the point. That's three to two. Three two for the US. All right, question number you six. This, Dale. You got this, Dale. You, Dale. you, me and Dupree. You, me and Dupree. <laughs> Dale against Alex Ollie. Here we go. Okay. We're just cycling here, folks. Number six. It's 3-2 US. In a process that takes just five minutes, the average person deletes what percentage of their emails they receive every day? 75%. Alex? 74%. The answer <laughs> is 48%. Alex, yeah. what? Yeah. closer. Three to three. First to speak loses. If any, any sales rep out there, now, hold on. Hey. first to speak loses. Golden hold, on, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not lightning round though. Real quick though. That's not lightning round. That's, that's called confidence. The 
Uh, it was who doing, answers. We're doing a little bit of a hybrid. Uh, That's our first one. We'll get better with the women. You get to change the rules as we go. I'm the moderator. I made the rules up. So we're going to get jumped on our answers. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, so this one's a little more vague. So this is going to be really interesting. I may have to go to the audience for this one. So it's three to three. Question number seven. And we're going to do, because we just did uh, Dale versus Sam. So we're going to do, I'm sorry, Dale, Dale versus Alex. So this is going to be Richard versus Costas. Here we go. Turn his mic on. Unmute. He's on mute for a purpose. <laughs> How many questions should you ask during a discovery call? No more than uh, five. Five. Six. <laughs> <laughs> According to stats from a reputable source, based on what converts highest, the answer is 11 to 14. So uh, Richard Harris uh, with the point. Richard. Uh, yeah, uh, Richard, I'm now, glad I told you something we, today. We mate. picked up on your price is right strategy. There yeah. Go. <laughs> it's now four to three for the U.S. All right, so next one's going to be Scott Lease against Daniel Disney. All right, here Let's we go. Scotty boy. Let's go. Ah. What percentage of salespeople said their phone is the most effective sales tool at their disposal? See what you created, Daryl. See what you created. Oh, a, yeah. Sixty-five. No answers, five. I will. I will disqualify in three, <laughs> two. I said sixty-five percent. Sixty-five percent. Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Ah. <laughs> 41.2%. <laughs> Daryl, you've created a monster. I see yeah. that. <laughs> we will fix this for the women. Play to win the game. All right, it's five to three in the U.S. Take the dub. Yeah. Next Take the dub. up. Shout out to Disney Richard who had the Smith. same strategy as me. Shout out to Dan who had the same strategy as me. Just nothing. That was good, Dan. Well done. <laughs> so because the U.K. answered first this time, that's the most recent question, the U.S. has to answer first this time. All right, so we're going to have Richard Smith versus Rob Jepson. U.S., you're answering first. Let's go. The, qu the question is, what percentage of top performers ask for a referral consistently? What percentage of top performers ask for a referral consistently? Yes. God, that's a good question. A third? 33%. Sanders, Rob. 33%. 33 for Rob. 23%. 23% for Richard. The answer is 47. Yeah, baby. Mm. Oh, Boom. Uh, Boom. Don't, don't, I, I ain't playing. I ain't playing. <laughs> Six to three for the U.S. This is the final question, although the winner has already been determined. True story. Hey, that last yeah. part. <laughs> Kevin Dorsey, you are up against Sam Dunning. And uh, we're going to make, we're gonna make the, uh, the U.K. No. Go first again this time. What percentage of salespeople intended to go into sales? 10%. 10%? Going 32. The answer is 39. <laughs> KD! Ooh. KD! Okay. okay. <laughs> that high, really. I never really. would have guessed that. Hey, that's, that's what the stats say. So yeah. I'm seeing seven to three. Is that what you guys got on the lightning round? Did I get that right? I lost count. I just lost yeah. count. So if I'm right, and we can look back on the slow mo replay, everybody's wearing their jerseys. Final score: USA twelve, UK four, with one draw. So there, my goal, Team USA. You, my friends, are the victors. You will face the winner <laughs> of the All Star hey. female UK team versus the All Star Let's female go. US team. Right. Let's right. go! Well done, everybody. Mm -hmm. Good well stuff. done. Well done. Good work, all. Good game, guys. Good game. It was hey, fun, everybody. Okay, that was if, awesome. you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't already, follow every single one of these people. As you can tell, they've got opinions, they've got knowledge, they've got insight, they've got experience. They're amazing. We hope you had fun today. We're going to wrap this puppy up. We're going to send you a recording. You can enjoy it again, share it around, debate it online. My name is Daryl Prell. I'm the friendly Canadian in the crowd. I also <laughs> hang out with Vanilla Soft occasionally. We hope you had fun today. We wish well done, Daryl. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, everyone. Well done, team. Thanks, Stay safe, lads. Good <laughs> shit. Cheers, all.